Here is Libertyville Park, the first station, and unnoticed, Katef Hinon. Aaron Akoen, Moshe's brother, he dies on the way to Eretz Israel, and his yurt site, the day of his passing, is specifically mentioned in the Chumash, the first day of the fifth month, the first day of Av, Rosh Chodesh Av, the month of the destruction of the Temple. Where would be the best place to discuss our Nikoi? On top of Horahar, as Rashi brings, you see a line of mountains and then one that's doubled. That's what you see when you go to Horahar, to Jebel Arun, the mountain of Aaron. You look at a line of mountains, like scoops of ice cream, and then there's a double scoop. It's so striking. But the border to Jordan right now is closed. In the Israel Museum is a stone of a burial, Ben HaKohen HaGadol. The Israel Museum is closed. In the valley of uh, Kidron, the valley of Yoshafat, is the tomb of the Bnei Chazer. It says their names on it. It's a family of the 24 watches of Kohan, and we know who they are. But I'm a Kohen, I'm a descendant of Aaron the Kohen. My son Nachliel Yosef did the DNA test. I can't take you there, because it's burials there today. So this, as Bell Telephone would say, is the next best thing to being here. We are in a, the edge of a burial area from the end of the first temple period and the beginning of the second temple period. The manner of burial then was very different. We're on the slope of the mountain facing J Jerusalem, the old Jerusalem. It's called Katef Hinom, the Hinom shoulder. It may be the biblical Hinom shoulder. And these d uh, graves were dug up in 1979 by Gabriel Barkai and his team of Barilan University. Here, where you see niches, those are where you would lie the bodies with the head in that position and the bodies would decay. When all of the flesh was decayed, the bodies were gathered and put into a masefa. In Parshat Vayechi, Rashi explains Vayigvan, he says it's not a masefa, but this is a masefa. You see a cave over there that's dug below. When it was excavated, it was never been robbed because an earthquake had covered it up. Almost 100 people were found buried inside and 1,000 objects. One of those objects was very special, and that's why we felt it appropriate to discuss Arne Cohen here. Because wrapped up in a little circle were two little pieces of silver, and on this silver was the blessing of the Kohanim, or a phrase incorporating the blessing of the Kohanim, may God shine his face upon you. It was rolled up and worn like a necklace, an amulet, around the person, they were buried with it. In Halacha, this is discussed, the Arach HaShochan brings, Tase Kesef, pieces, plates of silver that have verses or names of God in them, have to be buried, they have to be put into Kniza and into Shemus. So, in this grave, from the time of the first temple, someone was buried, two people were buried, with the blessing of the Kohanim around them. Now, let's learn about Aaron and Kohen. Today, Rosh Chodesh Av is the only yard site mentioned in the entire Chumash. We know, as Barnea so beautifully said, that the graves of Katef Hinom of the descendants of Aaron the Kohanim, the only yard site mentioned explicitly in Parshot Masa'e that we just read this last week is that of Aaron the Kohanim. He died on the first day of the fifth month, the first day of the month of Av. And all of us know. When we come into the month of Av, we decrease our Simcha, as the Mishnah says, because we're coming towards this terrible time of destruction, and particularly the Second Temple that we're still suffering from its destruction, Sinat Chinam. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, already then in biblical times, was Makdim Trufale Makah, gave us the cure before the disease, gave us the life of one of the most remarkable people, and the time that we reflect on his legacy today, the burial of the only person mentioned explicitly in the Torah's yard site, Aharon HaKohen, the first day of the month of Av, today. And incredibly, we know what the legacy of Aaron is. And I want to introduce this 
with a remarkable reflection of the Avot Rabbi Natan and the oldest commentaries on Pirkei Avot, which marks and notices the clear difference between the death of Moshe and the death of Aaron. When Aaron dies in Parashat Chukat in the 40th year, indeed people cry for 30 days, the Jewish people cry. And so too with Moshe in Zot Abracha, when he dies at the end of the Torah, everybody cries for 30 days. But there's a difference between who cries. Note that what Rabbi Natan, when Aaron dies, it says, Vayivku et Aaron, kol Beit Yisrael, the entire Jewish people, everybody cried. Yet when Moshe Rabbeinu died, it says, Vayivku b'nei Yisrael. It doesn't say Beit Yisrael, the house of Israel, and it doesn't say all Jews. There were some who didn't cry. How is it that by Moshe, the great savior of the Jewish people, most cried, but everybody cried by Aaron? Because the difference says the Avot Rabbi Natan was the nature of Aharon. Aharon was the national peacemaker, whereas uh, was Moshe Rabbeinu was the national decision maker. Yes, he brought great, great salvation, but he had to make tough decisions. He was the judge. And every time he had to judge two people, at least one person wasn't happy. That is the nature of decision makers and judges. But today, as we enter the month of Av, the spiritual legacy of Aharon is crucial. Aharon's role was to be the national peacemaker. If Moshe had to be judgmental of people's actions to judge, Aaron O'Kohen was never judgmental, not once. Says the Avot Rabbi Natan, Me'olam, never did he ever say to another Jew, Sarachta, you did something wrong. He would never tell people off. He took upon himself to be, uh, to, to be uh, totally imbued in every possible way with Ahavat Chinam. His job was to find the good in people, only Ayin Tova. He had the ability to do that, and that's what he did. We know, as the Avot Rabbi Natan famous says, when people had disputes, he went out of his way to, sh to show how both, to one side, how people, the, the other side was so cut up, and he would go to the other person and describe how the other person is so upset about it, do anything, everything to bring people together. He brought people together. The Avot Rabbi Natan says he brought families together. He brought husbands and wives together. So much so that so many thousands of children in that generation, more than any other name, were named Aharon. So many uh, women, mothers named their child Aharon because they said, if not for Aharon, we wouldn't have had this child. He brought Shekhinah of Shalom into families, into communities, and indeed the entire Jewish people because of his ability never to judge, to love everybody, to find the good in everyone. And that is the legacy we so desperately need, specifically in the month of Av, where we know we suffer from Sinat Chinam. So often we know um, acceptable disputes, disagreements become disputes, become derision, divisiveness, delegitimization, and demonization. And Aaron was exactly the opposite. Legitimate disputes remaining just that, disputes between people, where people legitimize each other as people, love and accept each other as people, and are unable to live with these differences. As we go into the month of Av and reflect on the horrific uh, crime and corollary of sinat chinam, of delegitimizing and demonizing the other because of their views, whether they be ideological or in personal disputes. May we draw inspiration from Aaron Kohen and from his legacy of Ahav Shalom Rodev Shalom and be the type of people that no matter what the disputes, ideological or personal, we disagree vehemently, but we legitimize the other. We never demonize them. Accept them despite their views. And when people come together, indeed it will be that these days which were Jewish history deemed as days of destruction, will ultimately be, as the Prophet Zechariah says, yeah, even the Tzom of Tisha B'Av will turn into days of Simcha, when Sinat Chinam turns into Ahavat Chinam. Have a wonderful day and, an, and a wonderful month. Chodesh Tovum Vorach.